Hello everyone. Now we are going to study a new classifier model that is called support vector machines. Uh, for this model in particular, some uh, previous background is going to be needed, especially the basic knowledge in optimization, like Lagrange multipliers, and also linear algebra stuff like the equation of an hyperplane. So make sure you have this previous knowledge before jumping into this tutorial. Okay, so here we're gonna see the classification problem in a different way compared with what we've been seeing in the previous videos. Now we are going to relate it to what are the margins. For example, assume we have this uh, training set of two different classes. In particular, this problem means to decide if a patient has epilepsy or not according to two exams electrolyte levels and toxicology analysis. So these are the two classes, right? So we can use uh, as a classifier just a line that passes through all the classes and divide the space into two areas, okay? So this could be one classification model. But in general, when we can divide the space, we have several alternatives. Right? Any of these lines, for example, could be a valid classifier. So how we can select the best one? The main idea in support vector machines is that we select as the classifier the one that maximizes this margin. The margin is the distance or the space that exists between the two classes. So we need to know two things mainly. How we calculate this margin and then how to maximize it. So this is going to be our problem setup. We're going to have two classes in where there will exist some margin. For now, let's assume that this margin exists. Later, we are going to see an alternative model in where the margin doesn't exist or in where the, the classes cannot be separated in such an easy way, right? So let's say we have the two classes with the margin in the middle and there is an hyperplane, which is this red line. And this is the equation of the hyperplane, right? You need the W vector plus one bias term. So this is the equation, right? W transpose times the vector plus B equals zero is for the vectors that lie exactly in the hyperplane. And in this case, we have these two hyperplanes where if we evaluate the vector in the equation, we get one. We are going to assume that we will assign the labels for the binary classification problem as plus one or minus one. Later, we are going to see why. So all the vectors or data points that lie in the left side of the hyperplane satisfy this equation. If we evaluate the vectors in the hyperplane equation, we're going to get a number that is smaller than minus one. And if we evaluate the blue points into the hyperplane equation, we're going to get numbers that are greater than one. So make sure you pause this video and you understand why these equations hold. All you need to know is to understand very well the equation of the hyperplane. Also, we have this distance, the distance between any data point and the red hyperplane in the middle. Let's call it R and can be calculated in this way, right? We need to evaluate the data point in the hyperplane equation and divide it by the norm of the W vector here. This term y just will contribute with the sign of the distance, right? Because y can be only plus one or minus one. Also, the margin is going to be defined as the distance between the hyperplane and the closest point among the data points in one of the sides. So the margin can be written with this equation. We evaluate all the data points in the training set with the distance equation we just saw, and we find the minimum distance. So the data points that minimizes this distance is going to be the one used to calculate the margin. These data points, the ones that minimize the distance between the hyperplane and the training points are called the support vectors. So this is why this model is called the support vector machine. We can always have our hyperplanes in the canonical way such that this distance, the distance between the support vectors and the hyperplane is one divided by the norm of W. Why? Because X touches H, which is this hyperplane in where we know that the evaluation is one. This term is only plus one or minus one. So here we're gonna have just one and here we're gonna have the norm of W. So the absolute value of the distance is always one divided by the norm of W. So after we find XI, in other words, the support vectors, 
we want to maximize this distance, right? Because what we want is to find the hyperplane such that this distance is maximum. Recall that we are finding the hyperplane. So at the end, W and B, which are the main parameters of our hyperplanes, must be found during the training phase. According to our optimization setup, we know that first we need to find the support vectors, the ones that maximize the, the margin. Then after we find the support vectors, we need to maximize the margin. In other words, first we need to solve this piece in where we're going to find the support vectors as the ones that minimize this distance. And later, after we know the support vectors, we need to find the actual parameters W and B that maximize the margin. But we need to add a restriction. We want that the points with the class plus one must lie in the right side of the hyperplane and the points that are in the left side of the hyperplane have all class equal to minus one. This restriction can be easily represented with this equation. So as you can see, for example, points that lie in the right side are going to have an evaluation in the hyperplane greater than one. And given that their class is plus one, this equation will hold. On the other hand, if we evaluate here the points that lie in the left side of the hyperplane, we know that this parenthesis is going to have a negative number, for example, minus two. And given that their class is going to be minus one, when we multiply two negative number, we are going to get again a positive number greater than one. So this is the reason why in the support vector machine setup, we must make sure that our binary classification problem has assigned classes only to minus one and plus one in order to use this simple equation as a restriction to the optimization problem and making our two classes separable with the hyperplane. For now, again, we are assuming that this is actually possible. Later we are going to see scenarios in where classes cannot be easily separable. Okay, we must do a couple of transformations before we solve this optimization problem. The first one is that we know that this piece is exactly one divided by W. And this is why we avoid this piece of the optimization. In general, we know that the distance to the support vector is one divided by the norm of W. And this is why, again, we are using the hyperplane in the canonical form, such that we can always make sure that the hyperplane evaluated in the support vectors is equal to one. So if we make sure that we have that statement, then we can assume directly that the distance between the hyperplane in the center, the red line, and the support vector is always one divided by the norm of W. So having that said, then we just need to find the parameters W and B that maximize this distance, subject to this restriction. This restriction, recall, that is telling us that we must separate in one side the points that belong to the class plus one, and in the left side the points that belong to the class minus one. Okay, this is the next transformation. Resolving this is kind of complicated, but we can easily see that maximizing or finding the parameters that maximize this term is exactly the same as finding the parameters that minimize this term. Why this term is easier? Because it's a quadratic objective function with linear restriction. And in the optimization world, there is an easy method to solve this. So again, we are doing this transformation just to have the optimization set up in a much appealing way to apply a very known optimization procedure. So now we just need to solve this optimization problem here. We call this the primal, and we're gonna use the Lagrange multipliers to solve this. So we're not gonna explain the Lagrange method, so make sure that you understand this uh, procedure before uh, continuing the video. So if we apply the Lagrange multiplier, we know that usually what we do is like we put our objective function and then we subtract the linear restriction, multiplying it by a parameter called alpha. Here we have the solutions. For this, we need to use the KKT conditions. We are not going to dive deep into the steps of solving the problem because it's out of the scope of this video. But this equation, when we apply the derivatives and equal them to zero, considering the restrictions and the KKT conditions, 
we find these solutions. So the first we can see that here we found how W looks like, but it depends on alpha. So we need to determine this parameter. And also we know how B looks like is the average of B sub I. And we can see that this term is just the subtraction that we see here, right? And this comes from the hyperplane equation. Recall that the equation is W transpose times X plus B equals Y, right? This holds for every support vector. Same thing here. So we can see that now the cost of calculating these parameters is not so high since we are just using the support vectors to calculate these parameters. So having the parameters, we need to find alpha. And alpha is actually the term that maximizes this equation. We can see that this equation is exactly this one, but with two main differences. First, we already replaced W and B with the equations we found here. And second, we multiply everything by minus one. So instead of minimizing this, as we stated in the beginning, we are going to maximize minus this. So this is why this term is written in the left side and this term is written in the right side, as we can see here. This is W just replaced and this is this term. So after having the hyperplane, how we can classify a new data point? So for example, here is the hyperplane we just found after the optimization procedure and we want to classify this new data point. Well, turns out that is really easy. We just need to evaluate this training point in the hyperplane equation and just see what is the sign. So in case the sign is positive, we just assign the class plus one. And in case the sign is negative, we just assign the class minus one. Okay, so it's a straightforward. Note that this will work with any dimensionality because we can always have an hyperplane in higher dimensions and we just need to evaluate points in the hyperplane equation and see the sign. 